Hello, I'm Dawn Matthews. Welcome to this lesson in our series on hardware. Last time we looked at supercomputers, mainframe computers, mini computers, and microcomputers. We learned that microcomputers were also called personal computers or PCs. This group of personal computers included desktops. In this lesson, we check out some of the smallest and most portable computers available today. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify different types of portable computers, identify differences between desktop computers and notebooks, explain what wearable computers are. Now, as we explained last time, computers come in all shapes and sizes from huge supercomputers that take up a whole room to compact microcomputers that fit onto a desk. But just how small do computers get? Salai is still at Mindset Network, so let's go over there and see if she knows. Hi Dawn, so far the desktop computer is the smallest I've seen. Well, computers are getting smaller and smaller all the time. But this doesn't mean that they're getting less powerful. Just the opposite, in fact. We're at a stage in technological development where most electronics devices, including computers, are getting smaller, lighter, and more powerful. How come? This is because technology has changed a lot and it is improving every day. Now we can make very powerful processes on a very small piece of silicone plastic. This is called a microchip. In fact, we're getting so good at making microchips that they say computing speeds will double every 18 months. Inside the computer, modern technology has made things smaller and this allows the actual computer case to shrink in size. So as a result, computers are getting smaller? Correct. But not only smaller, also more powerful. From the days when a computer took up a whole room and weighed more than a rhino, we now have computers which are just as powerful, but which you can carry in your briefcase or even in your pocket. But why are these small computing devices so popular? Is it because it's cool to have one? Well, partly, but more importantly, in the business world, people want to have easy and quick access to their computers at all times. They may want to work at home, in a coffee shop, or even on a plane. A desktop computer and monitor, like this one, is much too big to carry around. I mean, can you just imagine? And that's why they developed portable computers. Portable is a name we give to something that is easy to carry or move around. So portable computers have been specially designed for people on the go. For example, on this portable computer, do you see how the monitor is built into the computer case? This is so your output device is part of the computer case and not a separate item. So you can just close up the whole system and take it with you in one hand. They even have their own batteries so that you can use them for a short time without being plugged into a wall socket. Now do you get different kinds of portable computers? Yes you do. There are several different kinds of portable computers. The first type we will look at is the notebook. The notebook has been developed from an earlier version of a similar portable computer called a laptop. Today the terms notebook and laptop are often used interchangeably. And this is a notebook. As you can see, it's very light to carry and portable. It fits into a carry bag, like this, so that it can be moved around. While the notebook looks much smaller than a desktop computer, is it really as powerful as a normal PC? Yes, the notebook is much smaller, but guess what? It's just as powerful as a desktop PC. Let me explain how it works by comparing a PC to this notebook. And remember, everything I say about the notebook also applies to the laptop. One of the main differences between a PC and a notebook is the way the information is displayed. Look at this screen on the notebook. Do you notice a difference between the two screens? Watch as I press lightly on each screen. 
First, the PC monitor screen. It feels hard and cold like solid glass. Now let's press the screen of the notebook. It feels soft, almost like plastic. You can even see the colors change when I press into the screen. Obviously, a notebook does not have the same kind of screen as a desktop. But why is that? That is because the notebook screen is designed with a liquid crystal display or LCD. This is the same kind of technology that you will find in digital displays like your wristwatch and even some cell phones. A notebook uses an LCD screen because it's thinner and more portable than a normal desktop screen. And the keyboard? We will compare those now. As you can see, both keyboards contain all the same keys, but there is a slight difference. Can you see what it is? Well, the notebook's keyboard is a little bit smaller. Yes, it has to be smaller because it needs to be portable and fold up under the screen. And you see how some keys have been moved around. The mouse has also been specially designed to pack up and fold away neatly. This is a normal PC mouse. You can see it's quite big and it's separate from the PC. Now look at the notebook. Can you spot the mouse? This little square here is actually the mouse. The mouse on this notebook is called a touchpad because as you touch it, it moves the mouse pointer around the screen like this. When I want to select something, I can click on one of these buttons or just tap the touchpad. But it works the same as a PC mouse? It works exactly the same as this PC mouse, except that you use your finger to control the touchpad. Some people are not used to working with a touchpad and they can still use a normal mouse which connects to the notebook just like a normal PC. Let's plug this mouse into the notebook and see how it works. First, before I plug anything into a computer, it's important to remember that the computer must be switched off. Now, if you look at the back of this notebook, you can see a place for this mouse to plug into. The place where you plug external devices into any computer is called a port. Now that the mouse has been plugged in and the notebook turned on, you can see it works exactly the same as the mouse that was connected to the PC. But what about the CPU? Doesn't a notebook also need a central processing unit? Absolutely. Without a CPU, the computer wouldn't be capable of doing any processing. The CPU, or brain, is built into the case of the notebook underneath the keyboard. There's a lot less space inside the notebook than there is inside the PC tower case. That means that the hardware components of the notebook have to be packed together much tighter to fit inside the portable case. Now that you understand more about notebooks, can you think of the advantages and disadvantages for owning one? The main advantage would be that they're portable, but what about crime? Isn't it dangerous to carry a computer around with you? Yes, carrying your computer around with you does seem a bit risky. Because notebooks are so small, they are very easily stolen. And that's why notebook insurance is usually much higher than insurance for a desktop PC. Extra care should always be taken and never leave your notebook unattended. In fact, this is true for all portable computers and you get some even smaller than notebooks and laptops. Let's look at one of these. This is a PDA or Personal Digital Assistant. Oh, wow, it is so much smaller than a notebook, but does it work the same? Not exactly. You can't use a PDA to type Word documents or use spreadsheets, for example. A PDA was really designed to be used as an electronic diary. Well, a PDA can store phone numbers, addresses, it can remind you of your appointments and back up important documents. You can also use a PDA to add up numbers, to play games, music and to download information of the internet and now even as a cell phone. That's not bad for a device about the size of a small calculator. 
But just because it's small doesn't mean it isn't powerful. The PDA is definitely a real computer. To prove it, let's see if it has the devices responsible for input, processing and output. When you input information into a desktop computer, you usually use a keyboard or a mouse. With the PDA, things are a little different. You see, the screen of the PDA is touch sensitive. This means that you can use the screen to enter information. This is done using a special pen called a stylus. So the stylus acts like a mouse, pointing to where you want to go. The touch sensitive screen also works as the keyboard and you can use your stylus to type or write information into the PDA. Therefore, the input devices of the PDA are the touch sensitive screen as well as the stylus. You can also get a separate keyboard that plugs into the PDA if you don't like the stylus and need an extra input device. The processing is done by a CPU, which is built into the PDA's case. The CPU processes all the information. This CPU may not be as powerful as the CPU you would find in a PC or a notebook, but it has plenty of power to run the PDA. Finally, the output device. Can you see the output device? Yes. The output device is the screen and a PDA screen is nearly as big as the whole box. The screen is used to display the results of your processing. In the case of the PDA, the screen acts as both an input and an output device. You can also send information from the PDA to a secondary output device like a printer. PDAs are also called palm tops, handheld computers or pocket computers. Wow, technology is certainly advancing rapidly. Computers are becoming smaller and lighter by the day. But surely you can't get any smaller than a computer that fits into the palm of your hand. Actually, you can. A whole new category of computers called wearable computers has been designed and is already in use. <laughs> oh, hang on, hang on. Does this mean you actually get to wear a computer? <laughs> yes. These wearable computers are either part of specialized clothing or worn on our bodies. Just imagine the advantages. If computers are in contact with the surface of our bodies, it would be possible for them to tell us things about our heart rate. They can alert us if we have a faint heartbeat and can even contact a doctor if there is a serious problem. And if computers with voice technology were integrated into our clothes, it would be possible for our clothes to become a personal digital assistant. Although wearable computers are still extremely expensive, they are becoming more and more commercially available. This means that eventually they will be not as expensive to buy. Because these PCs would be small, lightweight, powerful and either touch or voice activated, they could be used in any situation. Do you have any examples? Yes, you get smart or intelligent clothing, which is made from fabrics that are wireless and washable. These special fabrics integrate computing fibers and clothing materials like cotton. There are even different types of sensors that can be customized to the needs of the wearer. So, for example, a firefighter could have a sensor that monitors oxygen or hazardous gas levels. Mountain climbers could get a suit that monitors breathing rates and body temperature. Policemen could have a jacket that collects voice data through a microphone and sends it back to the control room. There are smart shirts which can be tailored to fit anyone like any other shirt. So, for example, a baby wearing smart clothes outfit would have his or her vital signs monitored at all times. This would be especially helpful since some babies are prone to sudden infant death syndrome or SIDS, which often strikes unexpectedly during sleep. Sure, so the potential of wearable computers is endless. Correct. When it comes to computers, anything's possible. Technology has improved enormously over the years and it's showing no signs of slowing down.
I'm sure you've seen that computers keep getting smaller and smarter, so prepare to be amazed by the hardware of tomorrow. Now here's a task for you to complete. Find three different kinds of portable computers and name each kind. List differences between desktop computers and notebooks. Say what wearable computers are and suggest how they would be useful in your everyday life. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining us and make sure you join us again for another lesson in computer hardware. And don't forget you can visit our website for more information. Take care till next time.